give us the, the quick uh, the quick bio along the way with uh, we you you talked about your pro stops, um, but how about you know minor, junior, and senior lacrosse and where you've gone along the way and some of the big games you've played in along the way. Yeah, I think I think that's important. I think that's where the roots are. I, I grew up in Oakville, where the track is. Um, played for Oakville minor lacrosse Hawks my whole life. Got drafted into junior A. Uh, played five years for Brampton Excelsiors. And I was listen. I'm a December baby. You talk about relative age effect. Um, I was that guy. I mean, I hit puberty late, mentally and physically matured very late. So I wasn't very good at lacrosse till about you know halfway through my fourth year of junior things started to click I didn't really understand the game and no disrespect to the people in Oakville we didn't have a huge lacrosse um base back in the day of coaches that understood the game which is your dad he grabbed the book and my dad grabbed the baseball glove that's how we played catch he didn't have a lacrosse stick so I I didn't really understand the game um until about playing for Eddie Como who I think is one of the greatest coaches of all time obviously and just the way he can explain the game and then uh, a couple of years in victoria and uh you do you know, play basketball. juniors in oakville or you play juniors in brampton where'd you play juniors uh, oakville actually didn't have a minor program until i was in sixth grade it went it was here in like the 70s 80s and then it went away and then it came back when i was in the sixth grade so i didn't start playing lacrosse till i was 11 years old got it and where did you play junior a uh, Brampton, Excelsior, all five years. And um, like I said, I, I was a defenseman. Um, yeah. I stayed and played a lot of time up front. My first year in the NLL, not a lot of people know this, but I was a defenseman. So I played 11 out of 16 games back then. So um, I, I was a grinder. I mean, like I, I started surrounding myself with guys who were successful and like, okay, started picking their brain and then never put the stick down, started to understand how to work out properly and eat right. And then all of a sudden these things started to come a little bit easier to me. And I realized that um, there was an opportunity to play this game and with some longevity. So, um, and I owe a lot to the coaches in the pro ranks like Bob Hanley and Bob McMahon, who I think saw something in me that I never saw in myself. Um, they they kind of gave me the keys to the franchise in Arizona yeah. And I didn't think I could ever be that player. And I took so much pride in that. I was like, holy, Bob took me aside one day and he's like, hey, the ball's going through you. Like, you're our guy. And I didn't understand what that meant until I went home. And I'm like, holy jump. And that's a lot of a lot of weight on your shoulders. You better produce. And I said, okay, that's it. I will never be not the hardest working guy on the floor because of that. And I think I owe a lot to them to kickstart my career. And then throughout my journey, everyone that came into my life, good or bad, has, has made me a better player. There we go. Who gave you the nickname, by the way? Another uh, <laughs> no good story it was I'm a six round draft pick uh, <laughs> out of seven rounds. Uh, tall, lanky kid, probably 6'5", 210. And the arena announcer goes, you're dangerous, Dan Dawson. And I'm just stretching. He's like, you're dangerous, Dan Dawson. I'm a defenseman. No one knows who I am. It was just because the D's rolled together. Like, there's no good story to it. I was not dangerous at the time. By no means. I was not a very good lacrosse player. That and it just stayed crazy. with me my whole career. I love it. It's so good. <laughs> um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get us going here. So this is out in... Saskatchewan, very structured offense. Jeff McComb, one of the great lacrosse minds offensively in the game. So this is my first game out there. Um, I'm literally just trying to, to get roll off my man here. And I know there's a second pick coming up. So I kind of go that no man's land. Ben McIntosh is such a threat that he rolls off that. And I know that, that, that see the fenceman, how he comes off my inside shoulder so what I'm trying to do is freeze him and reach around with my shot because he's almost blocking it right there I know that sticks coming in the lane so I have to reach around him with that underhand bounce shot far side it would be really hard he matches my stick very well there and that's a lot to think about as you're closing out that shot so this is this action here has to do with you're trying to seal is that why you're spinning so you can seal him so I'm Trey exactly so I'm, I'm trying to get inside position where I can get um, my right-handed man over top, and it's Robert Church, and I, I didn't really do a really good job of hooking underneath the armpit. 
Um, so he gets top side, at which point Ben McIntosh is coming up with an up pick right away. It's a real structured offense. And then I know that they're both going to go to him. So I find that no man's land. But the defenseman does a great job of matching my stick. So I feel like I have to reach around him here instead of him knocking down the shot. I Got do it. have a late release. Like, I do have that bad crow hop, one-two crow hop that you teach kids, like, just catch and shoot. Uh -huh. I got a bad crow hop. So maybe I don't have enough trust of catch and shoot here, but I know that he's closing out. So I just try to reach around him. And luckily the ball goes in far side. Oh, you went far side on that one. This, this, yeah, um, far side. this little play is really cool. When you talk about the structured offense, they, they really seem in Saskatchewan, they seem to get the ball from one side to the other back to the, back to the original side about as well as anybody. And they're doing it here with an on ball pick and then a pick the picker look, it looks like. I think a lot of the offenses in the NLL are actually based around what Saskatchewan has done over the last couple of years. And these guys have all played together since junior. So the chemistry they have is unlike any other. Yeah. And the, the best thing they do that um, they pick when the ball's in the air. And I, and I think I need to do a better job of that. And I think a lot of kids do like people will pick when the ball's down in the corner, everyone knows you're coming. But if you watch Ben here, the ball's in the air and that's when he's picking and that's next to impossible to stop. That is and that's such what, a great concept. So it, it, that's what's going to throw your fenceman off. We always pick when the ball is to the off ball guy, but no, like pick when the ball's in the air going to Mark Matthews. And then by the time his defenseman's closing out, you're already on his back and Mark has a step. It also gives them the flexibility of attacking their, their two man side if they want to, but it really like makes it hard on the defense because they can't really cover both sides at the same time. Exactly. And most teams try to anchor the crease. So if you just bump up and, and Jeff actually is the first time I've ever thought about this. He runs a one, four set. Yeah. Imagine doing like a one, four, one field lacrosse set. He's yep. brought that indoors and, Actually, Buffalo did it, too, with the high pick. So if you look at the original six logo there and the City TV black logos on the turf, yeah. you can run four across there, which gives team, uh, defensemen, you know, nightmares because they're not used to it. They're used to playing a five-on-five, five, anchor the crease in a house defense. But now yeah. they see this one four look. They're like, okay, where do I really go? Yeah, interesting. I have a question. When, yep. you're, when you're, like, winding up here to try to draw the defender so you can reach around him with a, with a screenshot, um, do you ever, like, sell Twister? Like, you know, like, Cody leans back and, like, and, and makes it look like he's going to – do you ever do your hitch where you're really selling underneath that hard? Or do you try to just, just keep it simple? No, I try to keep it simple. Cody and those guys are too good. Yeah, I don't really have it in Twister Arsenal. I only have it in tight. Yeah. Um, from the outside, there's no one better than Cody. Speaking of Cody, I mean, sorry, we're going, we're getting along with the first clip here, but yeah, you know, we're taught like, okay, let's divide the floor in half. You, you take the middle of the goal and you split up the field. And now the righties are on one side, lefties on the other side. And then I start playing with Cody in Rochester and this guy starts going on his wrong side. And I'm thinking, man, this guy, it's probably not the best. And all of a sudden he starts sticking fifth shot, sixth shot, seventh shot. You're like, why not go on your wrong side? That defenseman actually is going to ease up off you yeah. thinking he has off pipe help. And Cody with that twister, he's unguardable. So we would run a power play with Cody where he could actually shoot from the far pipe and still stick it wherever he wants. But if you think of the fundamentals behind that, his angle is terrible, but he yeah. can do it. Well, so, because, because his twister is such a curveball, it makes him think right. he's on the wrong side, like he's going to throw it to the right pipe, but he curves it back to the left, basically. A lot. Exactly. So if you envision your release point is here as a right shooter off that pipe, his release point comes back here. So he's actually, he gains that angle back. Yeah. And then the goalies don't know if he keeps it there or he gives it far side. Yeah. So you learn, like I'm 38, like I'm still learning tons. I go to Saskatchewan, I learn this all new offense and, like it's crazy and I, I go and play with Cody at 32 I'm like wow man I, I don't know anything I'm still learning still how much are you last question on this clip I know it was a long clip but there's a lot to talk about um how much are you when you're winding up to fake it's are you using your shoulder to emphasize your fake 
versus just your hands or your stick. Yeah, if you if you notice this clip, I should shoot that right away. When you freeze it here, like there's time where as soon as I catch it and shoot, but I, I actually break my wrist, which means I bring my stick in front of my face, which yeah. thank goodness I have a quick cock back. Otherwise it should be just here where you do emphasize that shoulder and head. And when I do work with kids, I say, literally your stick doesn't have to move, but you can fake from this angle. Right. But you do see a lot of people do that because it sells it so much when your shoulder's coming forward, the benders tend to like, you know, duck a little bit, actually. Like, look at his, you know, so, all right, we'll move on. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of examples on that. But that was a great, that was a really interesting clip on so many levels. Um, and I agree, I love watching that team play. So here you are with Roch. What year was this? So this is probably my last year in Rochester, I'm guess one of my last seasons. So maybe 2016, 17. So I'm coming off the bench and we, we called for a bench seal here, which is a really good play where, if you look at how the defensemen are lined up, most defensemen are, they go to a spot, good or bad. They like to get over their comfort zone and then they get their matchups. So um, I think that's Palace setting an unbelievable screen here. So I know I can bounce it short side. Um, most goalies as a right shooter are going to go to that far pipe. So if you could bring that back with a bouncer and put it short side, it should go exactly where you want it to go, but you got to hit it. And if you miss it, you look terrible. It's tranny the other way. <laughs> but at least they're setting it up for you. So, you know, you got to shoot that one. Yeah. Uh, what about the deceptiveness in this, uh, besides the placement of the near side? Is there, is there, are you thinking about trying to fool the guy and make him think you're going far pipe on this in any way? Yeah. So I tell kids that what I'm trying to do is keep my technique the exact same if I'm going short side or far side. The only thing that changes is the snap of my wrist, where I can snap that wrist to pull it um short side versus keeping it far side with a straight angle shot i also notice your wind up <laughs> i see this a lot but you're going low high it's like a low high wind up it's a little bit of a low wag and then a lift and i feel like that i it seems like most box across players shoot that way one way or another they kind of lift as they're as it kind of freezes the goalie johnny palace if you're if, when you watch some clips on him he, he oh, has yeah. the catch his shot in the game he dips dips a stick low, then he keeps it high. I think it just freezes the goalie a second, makes them think. Yeah. I call that one the palace pump. Yeah, he's unbelievable. <laughs> it's it. sick. All right, back to uh, – So here's that one four set right here. That's yeah. that one four set. And most teams now are forcing you down the wing, forcing you or in field across, forcing you down the alley. So we get top side here. And Jeff kind of – I know he gets open here off the roll. So if you get top side on most defenses, I'm sure, you know, and field across, it, it breaks them down. Yeah. And Jeff, I know he's wide open here. And that's all because of the lefty, which I think is Ryan Keenan, just goes hard to the net. So when you realize, guys, just go hard to the net, good things will happen. And Jeff, again, it's that no man's land. And a lot of times it's where those, uh, where the embroidery is on the, on the logos are on the floor. Yeah. So uh, this 1-4 is kind of a high 1-4. The defense doesn't really want to, like, match up man-to-man -man because they want to try to anchor down low as much as they can. Is that – That's exactly right. So we've talked about that. These kids are taught to play in a house defense from tight lacrosse, and now you've got a 1-4 high set from just below the restraining line. Look at how much time Jeff has to crank his shot and score. Yeah. What a great look. And then the – the anchor stayed low, and when uh, Keenan cut down, his man stayed with him, and then two guys down low. And, yeah, and I – again, I'm getting I'm 37 or 36 when I want to go to Saskatchewan. I, I would never even think of one four set, right, for indoor. But it, it works great. It is really nice. Well, it's, it's really the most popular setup in, in field lacrosse. I mean, people may run all these different <laughs> sets, but in the end, they all turn into a 1-4. So this looks like a 1-4 also. It's a little bit higher, yeah. We never really did a structured one. But what I'm trying to do is time that where, if you rewind it to the beginning here, I'm trying to move again without the ball where Joey gets – so see the ball right now is kind of in the air when you first start that clip. That's when I should be on his back. I'm about a second late on it. So the ball's in the air there. I should be right on his back as Joey catches that. If I you do that, I'm sorry – the best defenseman in the league can't stop you.
because he's going to lunge towards that guy with the ball and then he goes back. So if Joe came hard here and we call it shoulder to shoulder rub, but the defenseman closes out great. And then I know he's got the double here. So I hold my defenseman here with a quick pump inside to Joe. It freezes him. Then I can shoot. Where'd you go with this one? Short side again. And that's what Tommy's so good at. If you drop your stick to that three quarter area, goalies more than likely are going to shoot far side here. So watch as he steps far side, short side yeah. hip should be wide open. You went in the air on the hip or on the bounce? No, in the air on the hip. Great faking though, just to be able to like get everyone's attention off you. So he's thinking Joe's wide open here. So see how he's stick as a passer. He's thinking dance a passer, dance a passer. I quickly try to freeze him. And now he knows I'm shooting and I have to reach around him again. Power play. So this is uh, last minute O. So we call this a red play. So what's happening here is the penalty is expiring. Uh -huh. So the feeder on the left side is going to match the guy in the box. So we don't have reverse transition. So okay. we want to make this pass with no time on the clock and an up pick and a down pick. We call it, it's like a V pick. So I should have a wide open here and they set an unbelievable screen and I just reach far side hip. That's really cool. And if you Great. watch that Peter, he's got coverage on the guy coming out of the box. So we're, we're covered. We're good. <clears throat> and we still have that advantage, right? Yes. Really interesting. And there's the reach. What percentage of your, uh, of, your, of your finishes are far side versus near side, would you say? I think the book out is that I love far side high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I like it high. And then um, – But when you're 6'5 six six or 6'6, six six, it surprises people how much reach you actually have. And the eyes on your stick can see a lot more than your average six-foot reach. And if you – have you ever done um, the string to the head of your stick for indoor – it's a great teaching tool. If you yeah. bring your stick up in the air and you, you show the kids that if you keep your stick high, you can go over the goalie's shoulder, even if you can't see it, but your stick yeah. can see it. Yeah. And then as soon as you start going to sidearm, you, you've lost where the ball can go over the shoulder. Right. So some of our clips are, are older clips, so they're a little fuzzy, but I think we can talk through them and get a lot of out of it. So what do we got here? So this is uh, – the defenseman is, is playing pretty low. I, I think two steps inside the restraint line is a great shot in our league. Um, so, again, that's because we're, we're playing fast here, and I just know that he's so below me, I can rip that um, time and room and just find the hips on the goalie. Is that short side hip again? I think that's actually, we call it upper cheese, upper five hole. Upper five hole. Yeah, so even if you the goalie stick is there, um, there's a small window of opportunity on the upper five hole. So just above, because especially in, in, in the summer, that may not be there, but right now. Oh, yeah. Not with the wooden sticks. You know, it seems amazing how many people shoot five hole and upper five hole in, in box compared to field. I mean, it's like, it's such a go-to. Watch, if you roll this shot, um, Kirky does an unbelievable job of keeping his five hole there. But um, what is actually open, if you look at most box goalies, they got a hip hinge, which means from their knee to their hip, if you draw a triangle, that's, the, that's where you want to shoot on, a, on an indoor goalie. Your hip will never get to the post. So watch how his, his hips go. What, so if, if this is yes. uh, the triangle is like that? Exactly. So those, that's where you're going to have the most success. And Tommy, he, he does an unbelievable job of that. So watch how he's, his knees go together on this. And it'll be wide open if you keep it hips. Got it. But everyone loves, to, like, everyone notices the high, the high, yeah. the high stuff. Like, everyone loves that shot. But I'm telling you, like, I always tell the kids, they, they don't ask you how, they ask you how many, so. <laughs> True. So we got a power play here, kind of six on five, I believe. Oh, no, it's just five on five set. And so my release on this is I'm trying to sell Kirky far side, and hopefully he steps. And again, like, he does a great job. I don't know how I found this, but 
if he steps and still keeps his stick there, I call this inside leg five hole, where I'm aiming for inside his right leg. Even if he steps and keeps his stick there, there should be some room there to put it. So that was his left foot that you put it by or his right foot? I'm it? actually trying to put it by his right foot, but I think that went in the left foot. Yeah. And sometimes you get lucky, right? Yeah. Kirky does it again, an unbelievable job. I don't know how I'm, these are going in, um, but I did, that was far side five hole, but I'm actually trying to bring that short side five hole because most goalies will step harder than that, but Kirky does a great job of squaring up with me. Well, and if they step with their left foot, you know, there's got to be a little more space on that inside foot, right? Right, and then that right hand will follow and keep the yeah. stick to that left uh, ankle. Right. Um, a quick question here on the way you sort of set this thing up. Um, you're sort of carrying over, looking it off, and, and really allowing this to set up for yourself. H how do you describe that? So if, if we play parallels on picks, which means um, if I have the ball carrier here, or sorry, the ball carrier is here. And as we cross parallels, as soon as we cross to that point, I know I got the defenseman's back. So that's why we're trying to cross parallels right here. Right here. Yes. I don't get there enough, but I know he's got inside position. I could just quickly come back. So, I and I know that guy's going to hold crease. So it's almost like we've created a, a two-on-one situation because he's holding crease. So see how the defenseman's just staying and playing? Yeah. If we quickly – Cross parallels, then I know I can get back top side 100%. He's going to roll out of it. And you really just kind of look him off more than anything else. I mean, yeah. you carry over a little bit, but you're just kind of looking down there. It's awesome. That's just Robert Church being an unbelievable shooter. Yeah, That's a, lot of, a lot of good stuff. I mean, um, Matthew's drawing and just popping and no, a no follow through a little uh, underhand kind of lever type of pass and your throwback. And it's so much easier for a righty shooter to catch it from the left and score. But Robbie, I'm just trying to drag my man as far low as I can this new and it just makes a great and look at the hip shot. I don't think I think this is kind of where the hip where you want to put the ball. So that's that shot is almost unstoppable in the indoor game. Short side hip as a righty shooter, vice versa for a lefty. The goalie's hip will never get to that post. And he's got the low high wind up going. Yeah, again, he dips that shoulder. He actually, see his head? His head almost tucks his head right down and just kind of. It's awesome. Subtle movements like that, you'd be surprised. And even as a feeder. Kids don't know, like, use some of those fakes as a feeder. Oh, for sure. You know what Darius taught me one time? He said the, the people talk about deception a lot with, like, where you're deceiving the goalie. But he talks – he likes to think about it more like when. And he says, whenever you transfer your weight from your back foot to your front foot, the goalie is expecting the ball. And when there's a delay on that, that is when you can freeze a goalie completely because they'll almost, like, take a step before you shot it. And what I've found is this windup naturally does that. It, right. it brings you up. And as you're coming up and transferring your weight. Um, so I just was curious to hear your opinion on that quote. That's a, I like that perspective. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So we're back in Rochester here. So we got to it doesn't show it. I remember this goal. It, we got about three seconds on the, on the left on the shot clock. So I know everybody is shooting out to my stick side and I'm actually off of that far pipe. So I know I should be able to just run around them. Three seconds seems very quick, but it's actually a ton of time. Like you can face dodge one, two and still score. So that's the biggest thing. So most more than likely they see the shot clock. Okay. Get on his stick side. I just quick face dodge here. Both defenders go because they think the shot clock's going to go. And then I just release it just in time before the buzzer. Where'd you put it? That was another five hole. So see how he steps there and that'll show the inside five hole. So his stick is actually still five hole, but look at inside five hole 
on the steps. So see right that inside five hole. Right there. That's what you're talking about. Right. So you teach kids like the stick is still there. Like I get it. The five holes, but it's inside five hole. And your sort of three quarters release makes him think you're going far side. So he has to, or in this case, you, yeah, I mean, to the left, to the right. And it makes him step, correct? I mean, that's one of the reasons why that swing angle. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. awesome. Back to Sask. Yeah. So this is. So this is a six on five delayed penalty. And what I'm doing is I'm back dragging, quick pick inside. And you notice Ben McIntosh's man comes from the crease. So as long as you keep that triple threat position, I'm a shooter, I'm a shooter, I'm a shooter. Then I know that he'll come to me. And that's exactly what he does. And Ed, then he just finishes real nice goal here. That guy's such an incredible shooter too, isn't he? All those guys. He's I, oh I didn't realize how good he was till we played him in the man cup in Maple Ridge and he almost single-handedly kept him in it. He, he's an unbelievable player and selfless too. Like that's, that's the thing is he's, he's very selfless. So. All right. What do we got here? So what, what we're thinking here is last shot, a little bit aggressive here. We should, I should probably pull this out. There's 17 seconds left. It gives them a little bit of time. So I'm trying to get a two for one look, hopefully, by getting off the goalie's far pipe. But now we're down to eight seconds. So Joey kind of got lucky. The defenseman kind of gave up his back and looked at me as a feeder in the corner. So I'm just pump faking to the corner. And hopefully it frees the defenseman. Then Joey cuts off that. So he's kind of looking at me. And by the time he opens up, Joey's naked inside. And we're talking about Joey Resiteritz? Yeah. Unbelievable player. How often are you faking to set up your feeds like that? I mean, I think that's so awesome to manipulate a defender. And, and Joe sees you faking, and he knows he's going to be able to go back door if his guy bites on it at all. Josh Sanderson was the best at this in, in his days in Toronto and Calgary. He would always just pump fake in the corner. Most defensemen will shoot out. Who was? But, uh, Josh Sanderson. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, best feeder in the game by far. This clip is pretty interesting. So yeah. we got a busy right side here. So now we've gone away from the three man game, and Joe's actually have kind of gone off to the far side um, to create a two man game, you know, over the strong side. So as I come out of this underneath, Joe's just kind of playing coy here. His defenseman comes over because he feels I have an inside step on the guy, at which point I know I can pull out and find Joe backside, and there's no help on that. Oh, nice. I want to talk about this um, hard pump hesitation face dodge that you did right there. Earlier, I was sort of referring to like when you when you bring your shoulder – when you bring your shoulder through, way better doing it lefty, it allows you to sell shot a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And, and, and this guy, I mean, he, he closes his eyes, I think. Yeah, I got to get over top more as, as I get older. I, I've gone back to that face dodge a lot. And if the help wasn't there, I had a clear path to the net. Yeah. Uh, just thank goodness Joey never stopped moving his feet. He's, he's open part side. But I, I, I like that. I didn't even think about that is, is kind of closing that shoulder and it allows that late and then you bring it. Uh, and that's kind of what yeah. I was talking about with, um, with, with Cody too. It's like when you bring it to here and you keep bringing it, you can still shoot from here. Right. But then you can actually face dodge at the last moment and turn your wrist and they can't really tell the difference. There's no way to – you can't decipher it until it's too late. It's almost the same cons, you know, it's just uh, the later, the more you can hesitate on, on your, when you release it, it can fool a goalie, but can also fool a defender. But that is such a nice little hard pump. And then a nice little reach dunk. 
Um, yeah, he's good at that. He's an unbelievable player. So that's, that's yeah, that's simple. Just pick play. I feel that fenceman's off me a bit. I've gone five hole enough in this game. I figured I could go far side bouncer top shelf. One of the things that um, I talk a lot about with the athletes I work with is the posture that you're in right now, this low cradle. It's a dodging threat look. It's keeping everybody on, at, you know, guessing as to what you're doing. You're not sh selling shot yet. You're not selling um, pass yet. You're selling dodge, which kind of makes those guys take sides and get ready to back off. And then all of a sudden it allows you to step right in and get your shot. I like that. I'm going to start uh, using that in a shooting drill. It's like you're just a kind of – you're waiting and quick jab step, get your hands back, shot. Right. I like that. But it's like, you know, when you get into that posture, even if you do it to your dog, what does your dog do? They'll get down into that yeah, posture. Yeah. Everybody reacts to that posture. Um, and uh, you can use it to control your man, back them off a little bit, um, let them brace – Nice clear film. What do we got here? A little swing. So that's, uh, Joey's cutting through. And right now that defenseman's on a retreat and his head's turned. Like Joey's just – by Joey working hard, I mean, he's not even setting huge picks here. He's just causing confusion. Um, so he literally just ran down five yards, ran up five yards, and just caused so much confusion. I don't even think, think he set a pick. And sometimes that's all you need. And this is like – Colorado plays that anchor defense, right? Right, yeah. And this is makes it really hard when you bring them up high and you kind of just kind of play. They're trying to figure out. They're switching high-low right here. They're trying to figure out what to do, the, the anchor. You know, all of a sudden has to come all the way out to play you. And he doesn't really want to do that. He, you know, he'd rather keep his anchor, right? And one thing I try to do is, is – my head angle is, 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 is still stays as a passer, so it freezes that defenseman a bit in tight here. So as I come out of this, I'm looking at Joe, and then all of a sudden, I'm kind of still looking at the net, if, if that makes sense to you. Uh -huh. my, my vision of my head sh is showing pass to Joe here, but in my mind, I know I'm ripping this. So you're, 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 you're looking off your shot a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Similar to the dodging threat when you're looking off your shot. Because, because I guess what is, is part of that reason because when you if you if you engage with the goalie, he's got a better chance to save it. And if you just don't even engage with him, it's like harder for him to even know when you're shooting it. Yeah. Okay, we're getting into a few clips of like my favorite thing, and we talked about this way back in like oh five in Arizona. But you play this game with players where you bait them into overplaying you and you like belay them and sort of step back or swim them. Um, can you talk about your thought process on, on, on all that? So what I'm, I'm trying to do is one is use my leverage when people start lunging. So I'm waiting for this defenseman. He's going to lunge at me at some point here and he's lunging here. I know that if I make myself small and do that olay, with a quick back pedal, he's gone. Yeah. What I'm doing is I'm getting my stick back, I'm shooting, and then the behind the back to Joe. And I think the next three are almost all the same with yeah. Courier coming up. And that's why I tell kids and, and coaches, listen, the behind the back, if we roll this, like there's no better entry pass from here, boom. Because he's going to match my stick as a defenseman, right? You're going to close out and match my stick, but – you cannot match a stick behind the back. Like, no one would do that. Yeah. But you have to hit that pass nine out of ten times. That's kind of my rule I tell kids. Yeah. You can throw behind the back pass 100%, but you got to have that 90% accuracy and execution with that. So, I'm engaging here. I'm shooting. And then all of a sudden, as soon as he starts to close out, I can flip it to Joe. I love it. The other thing I love that you did, and I talk about this a lot with the athletes I work with, is that – the way you draw and dump is you fake first because your fake makes 32 go away a little bit. You fake, then you step in, you fully draw him, 
and then lay lay off your behind the back, and it just opens it up so much more. And I think so so many so many players when they have a two on one, they just make the pass. But if you make it now, even behind the back, thirty two can get there by by faking first and then really stepping in, selling shot, and fully fully drawing him is just such a thing of beauty. I like that. I, I didn't think about that. That's good. So this is uh, that's just a. So if you think of up, up pick, what, what I do with my up pick some of the times is I flash straight across the field instead of going right to the net. Yeah. Because they're, I feel they're going to anchor. And then when I know two defensemen are above me, that's that no man's land where I should be able just to catch and shoot, no problem. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like this is one of the most dangerous cuts in box across this up pick slip to the middle. Uh I feel like in field lacrosse, they could make a killing on this as well. It's like really, really hard to guard this. I mean, no matter how, whether you switch or stay, I mean, how do you, how do you do it? Yeah, this is a, uh, it's a tough one. And I get, you know, you want to be known as a, as a really good off ball player. I'm, I'm more known to have the ball on my stick. There's no doubt, but that's why I love those off ball players. They're just unbelievable where they go on the field. He's really trying that defender on, on, um, on the man you're picking here is really um, staying pretty tight on it, isn't he? He's really yeah. trying to get over that thing. Yeah, he's fighting through that. There's no high and low there. He's trying to get low on that. Ole coming up. <laughs> You're not allowed to use your offhand in field, but in box, it's such a great thing to be able to do, isn't it? Yeah, because, you know what? I don't do it enough, and everyone always makes fun of me now. They're like, whatever happened to swim move? <laughs> I try to bring it back. Um, I just think the fencemen are getting better at it. So you, they're going to close out to my stick side, and then, again, if you turn sideways, make yourself small, um, you know, it's going to be hard. That check should just slip right off you. Yeah. Well, where'd you put this one? Far side. Five hole? Five hole? inside five hole yeah so i'm trying to sell like i'm jumping and, and reaching over his shoulder then i hold my release and bring uh, it back short side uh, i see hole. randy stats do that one he's unbelievable yeah so it's kind of like you go lift up like you're going to try to shoot over them and they have to jump up in the air and their five hole opens up yeah they got to respect it or else that is such a great finish another ole I think this is just a, uh, it's just a passing play of just picking and popping. And then Palace does a great job that I don't think we do this enough is make the entry back to the, the guy who gave it to you because both defensemen shoot out and we're on the strong side. And again, Joe does a great job of just rolling to net off this. So picking and popping means as I engage low, Palace is going to roll out of that and pop instead of go to the net to draw that slide guy. But Joe's man comes to me and Joe just finishes inside. How often do you guys do this little motion on three man sides where uh, one guy sets a pick and then the next, and you carry it up a little bit, then the other guy comes. It's like a repick with two different guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't think we do that enough. I'm going to tinker with that tonight. It creates quite a bit of confusion, doesn't it? Yeah. I've been sort of seeing this lately, but it's like one pick and slip, and then and then the other guy comes up, and it's like, you know, this guy was completely – you probably could have backhand pumped that and shot yourself too. Yeah, because he's closing out hard on this. Yeah. Such great passing, though. Beautiful. Nothing better than great passing, is there? No. When everyone gets to touch the ball, everyone's involved, it's good. So this is uh, overtime, Ooh. and I'm trying to get that inside five hole on the goalie. He doesn't move his stick um, in the five hole, but I felt he would step. And he again, he does a pretty good job on this. Um, but he lifts his his stick, which is a little bit different on the five hole. As he falls here, his stick is in the air. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So it turns sideways on him. 
and then I squeak it in five hole. It was kind of a high five hole, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly what it was. Five hole, high five. High five. What do you call it? High cheese. High cheese. High five hole. Uh, oh, they call it upper cheese. Okay, upper cheese. Upper they call cheese. It. Uh, what is this from? This is from my first year in Rochester. That's Casey Powell out there too. I thought so. Mikey Kersey. Um, this is one of my first couple of games in in Rochester, and for some reason the defenseman just was late on the closeout. So I, and this is this is probably my favorite shot as far side high, um, but more than anything, watch the goalie step on this. So see that see how that opens up that inside five hole. That's what I'm talking about on the late release. Right. But I just kept it far side. And you can kind of just play between those two shots. Well, that's exactly right. I said set your guy up for shot two, three, and four. If you know you're ripping ten shots in a game, it you know make it really hard on the goalie. So we called for a a seal bench seal up off of this. What we're trying to do is hopefully my man is anchoring the crease and I can set a huge seal for Cody or whoever that is off. That's Cody off the bench, but yeah. both guys go to him. So I just slip it and then go to the net. And this is one of the only twisters I have. The wrong side. Twister. Yeah. So it looks like I'm here and I'm going far side. Then I bring it back five hole. Oh, back five hole. Yeah. And then I'm just lulling the guys to sleep here, waiting for that check, and then I know I can go to the net. <laughs> just absorb hits is what I tell kids, and it's hard to teach kids defense. Like, don't swing out there past the restraint line, or yeah. else you can just run through it. So you just try to absorb checks. And this is that five hole. Was this the next shot? Yeah, that was my next shot, knowing that I hopefully he would step. And then I just – Bring it back far side so it's wide open. He definitely uh, lifted up big time. Yeah. So same release. I'm just snapping my wrist a little bit more. His left arm didn't go up as much, though, to guard that right top right corner. It's no. And he was actually dropping on this of all places for some reason. So this is kind of crossing that parallel. So as he's moving with me in sync, and then we cross parallels. Now he's got his back. And you're just keeping this perfect distance of space so your guy can't overplay you, but you're close enough that you can get what you want. So nice. Crossing the parallel. I love that terminology. You're selling underneath here a little bit, too, to get him to overplay you, right? Right, and that's exactly it. Now, in a perfect world, if you're teaching it properly, Josh would have came right away off that. So if you roll this and then, boom, right there. He mm -hmm. should be on his back. And then we, we have him. We have so much room. He's playing me out by the boards. Like, as an O guy, that's what you're hoping for. Like, come play me by the boards. Let's make this a race to the net. All right, a question. Um, right here this guy had a choice of switching and trying to take away the pick and roll or coming out to you are you manipulating that at all because obviously if you can keep him on you um right now if you can keep him on you then he had then then you're going to have a two-on-one right because then he has to step up if he drops off immediately and kind of grabs him you know you've lost the, the pick and roll how do you set that up you know what i mean yeah, roll that. I got to think about that for a second and see how that – do I keep going in that here? Is that what keeps it? Because in the end, what made this work so well was you ended up baiting two guys to come play, right? right. And I Why think that, that that guy didn't drop in and just play and switch? You know, one I think personally, I just think he lost his step there. If you – like he stumbles right about here. You know what I mean? So he's stumbling, and I think he just kind of gets discombobulated. And that kind of messed him up on the switch. But we, the next clip actually, I think is the exact same pick and roll with Joe. The reason why I was asking too is because I've noticed a lot, like guys like Dane Doby and Sean Evans and stuff, they, they almost like invite their guy to think that they can get over when they really can't. And it forces that guy to step up. And then right. once they've committed to trying to get over, they can't switch anymore. And now that guy's wide open to the net. 
Yeah, that's a great point. You know how Dobie does that? He like he's back and forth, and then he just invites you to come out and play him because you think you can just get him. Kind of like how you invite people to play you on your on your OAs. You're inviting them out, and then once they get chipped on the pick, yeah, um, they can't switch anymore, and they can't. They're not going to recover. No, oh, I like that. So same pick, just Joe this time. And he did, he got a real good, he got a good bump on that one, right? It forced Chris, um, he was right on his hip. And that's, that's the parallel pick right there. So again, talking about north and south, I said up pick, down pick. No, let's, let's sit what I call parallel picks. Let's sit picks east and west because that'll take the defenseman. That it'll mix them up. Yeah, exactly. Now we've crossed parallels and we have Chris's back. And he gets, he gets a good bump on him here. If he goes down, probably a possession call, but Chris is he's a fighter, so he's going to try to stay on his feet, right? Now I know we have a step on him, and I think that's toll. has got to make a decision to either let me shoot or close out. Did you ole him here or something? Like, how did he, how did he miss so, It's almost like I, uh, I, re I don't know how to say this, like reverse hump, like stuck my butt out. Like yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, like that, like a reverse hump and stick my butt back. And I, I worked one time this year in Toronto. Um, it's just weird because the extension on the cross check, no That's one's strong when your arms are straight. Everyone's strong when you're bent. It, it's really similar to your Ole swim. It's just an Ole to the top side. I was wondering if that's like what you're doing. I figured that's what it was. But like if you can get a – you're baiting him into cross checking you and then you step back a little bit and you're also so long that, you know, you're, 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 you cover more ground on your steps. I think it's easy. I think it's a classic move for a tall guy, actually. It's a lot like basketball, like a, like a killer crossover. You're just trying to jimmy and, and be like Gumby like. Yeah. And by the way, did you notice what he did on this finish? It's like a fake dive. I know. It's that's crazy. <laughs> You know, I just found a new move I like is Jordan McBride. He's got this dive and pull it back short side high. If you look at Jordan McBride's last goals, last couple of games, it's unbelievable. He, he, he dives, but he keeps a stick here, and he literally just puts it back far side high. It's beautiful. Oh, back far side? No, back short side, sorry. Okay. Back short side. So he holds them, then he reaches here with his whole body, but he keeps a stick here and puts it back short side high. You know how, like, when people, like, don't really feel like diving, that they do that? They just pretend they're diving, but then they don't dive. That's pretty much what he did. I mean, the yeah. goalie bit on dive right here. He's almost in the corner. That's a lot of net to finish that shot. <laughs> he kind of dove in the end, but it was like a, it was like a hesitate. It was like a fake dive dive. There's a seal. Um, yeah, so I'm setting the seal there, and then all of a sudden both defenders went, thank goodness. And then just try to finish inside. So try to hold Nikki short side and uh, just freeze him for a quick second and then get there. And just dive it around, right? Yeah, reach, reach around his glove there. That was just great hands. And the shot, that, uh, you know what that is? That's just luck. I, I hit that shot. If I'm square up with the net, I. I try to sell far side underhand and then rip a one-hander behind my back short side. But that one there, is, I'm not going to lie. I'm not looking. That's luck. That's, that's luck. We were talking about this the other day, though, like this position where you can kind of sit there with them on your back um, because you can feel it out. They can't really get on your hands. You can fake. Like you're faking that guy a little bit, and you're just sort of sitting there. Junior would do this all the time. Jonesy does that all the time, where they put their yeah. back to you. And it's just like Jonesy's it, next it, impossible. Jordan Junior was the best at it, and Jonesy's unbelievable at it too. You scored this way a couple of weeks ago, where you sort of had your back and you just waited and, and did a little step back for it with a you know more of a screenshot. Yeah, and you're if you rewind it just a quick second there, or even there is pretty good. That's what we talked about of getting underneath that check. So as Brody extends, extends, that's a high check. If if I do that Gumby like move, uh -huh. I should be able to get a step on him. But there's it's so it's so crowded inside. I know I can't go the net. Right. And, and Gary Gate was really good. You could almost use your 
two hands on your stick and use a push off and get underneath that check and you'll be able to get a shot off the foam. The Gumby the, uh, thing um, is uh, this guy, um, Ryder Garnsey, I did a webinar. He calls it, he goes dead shoulder. Yeah, that's a good one too. Dead shoulder, which is a really a kind of a cool terminology for it, don't you think? Yeah, I like that. That was just nice offense. Yeah, that's just posting up in the middle and finding kind of a lane. Is this five on four? So that's a five on four set, yeah. Oh, here I saw this one. Sorry, I went back a little too far. Yeah, we'll look at this film one more time. Uh, so this five on four, the righty seems to be on the wrong side. You're trying to do that same thing that Cody was doing on the wrong yeah, side. Yeah, we're doing a little bench seal here, trying to wind up and crank it. They close out real nice. And then Joe just is kind of trying to comes up, boom, got some space. It's awesome. Great stuff, man. Dan, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on and taking the time. I love uh, talking lacrosse with you. It's been too long. We'll have to do it again sometime. Uh, I can open up to questions if people have any. If anybody's got oh, any questions. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate all you do. I think you're thinking outside the box, not just this year since the first time we met, which would have been 2006. So it's really cool what you're doing in the, a lot of what you're doing is, is just so cool for the game. So we appreciate that. Yeah, man. Dan, good luck this uh, weekend. You said you got Buffalo this weekend? Yeah, Buffalo Saturday night. So a nice short trip. Uh, good luck in the game. I'll be watching, and um, I'll be in touch about uh, other topics. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a great All day. Right. Have a good one. Take care.